Digital marketing seems to be the mystery that most entrepreneurs struggle with, and real estate investors are no exception. The truth is, there are multiple avenues to success. Those experiences will be best shared by the guests on this podcast. My name is Jason Wright, and I would like to welcome you to Real Estate Investor Marketing Stories. What's going on? Jason Wright here. Welcome back to another episode of the show. Here's a question that I get all the time. I'm going to ask you that question. I'll let you think about it for a second. Should your marketing efforts be outbound or should you rely on inbound marketing? Should you be going after people or should you let people come to you? I've been doing this business for almost seven and a half years and I have my opinions and I'm sure you have yours. I'm going to say the answer to that initial series of questions is yes. It wasn't really a yes or no question, was it? So I, I think when I got started, just, just something to think about, right? You're more than likely looking to uh, grow the no, number of passive investors in your world. So that's fine. But uh, the concepts are going to be the same for your business and mine. So let's talk about it for a second. I used to have this attitude that if I just created content, put it out there, people would come. The truth is, and that could happen after a certain point, the truth is the timeline is unknown, right? It may take longer. It took me two and a half years of consistent blogging before I really knew anybody was even reading it. And I don't even remember what came of it. Maybe it was Somebody reached out to me on Facebook. I, I don't even know that a call was booked from it, but there was some something. And, you know, you, you always hear like with the paid ads, you shouldn't do paid until you reach a certain level of income, that type of thing. Well, it's an interesting thing, thing to think about. Now that we've grown and we have a great reputation, the repeat business, the referral business is a monster. If we wanted to do ads now, because we've got a great offer, know who we're talking to, would it make sense? Yeah. I love organic though. I love that attraction-based marketing. Even though it's a little slower to get started, usually the people that come to your world uh, are of a high quality, you know? So people kind of hang out in the background and they'll consume your content, maybe on your email list. And then when they do come to you, they're a little warmed up, right? They have seen some things, learned some things from you. And it's usually a better experience, in my opinion. But uh, certainly can take longer. And patience is not always... It's not always a good thing in this game, right? You want to get things going. Anyway, something to think about, something to think about. All right, for my guest this week in this episode, <laughs> talking to a really cool guy. I have the privilege of having uh, met this guy in person as well. His name's William Hollis, but if you call him William, he will correct you with the quickness and tell you it's just Hollis. And I know when he's listening to this, he's laughing right now, but I'm not kidding. Um, his company is called 24 Capital Group. He's a software engineer by trade. What's funny about that is when you think software engineer, at least when I do, I think nerd, right? I think introvert. Nothing wrong with that, but he is not that guy. He is big, giant, bold, extroverted personality, big, booming laugh, one of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet in your life. So he is not your typical software engineer. Very passionate about real estate. And uh, as you will find out momentarily, him and I have a great, great conversation about his journey. Let's get into it. What's happening, William? Welcome to the show, man. How's it going, Jason? Good to see you. I, I'll go by Hollis, by the way. Just <laughs> tell us that story. I know the story, but I want everybody to hear this story. Yeah, yeah. So it I, turns out uh, my parents own an entire neighborhood. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Hollis from Hollis, Queens. I grew up on 204th Street in Hollis. My junior high school was on Hollis Avenue, so um, needless to say, when you show when you're in the neighborhood and your last name is Hollis and you're in Hollis, everybody just calls you Hollis. So um, that's why I go by Hollis, and it's kind of a, it's kind of like Bono, you know. When I go to int introduce myself, just just the one name, everyone's waiting for the <laughs> for the first and last name. I just hit him with the one name. Yeah, and that's all coincidence, by the way, too. It's not like yeah. We own, they got the street. It's all coincidence. Pure coincidence. I wish we owned that street. <laughs> but... <laughs> oh, man, I'd love to hear uh, your story, how you got started down the road of uh, real estate investing. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So really, it does start back in Hollis, Queens. So we rented a house in that in, in that neighborhood from a man named Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter, every first of the month, you know, this is 90s, he comes around to collect the rent. He's stuffing $100 bills into his wallet, just just mashing them in there to the point where at the end of the day, his wallet didn't even fold. It was just a hat with cash, right? So I see him and I'm, you know, couldn't have been any more than seven, eight years old. And I'm thinking, man, whatever he's doing, he's got it figured out. I need to figure out how to do what Mr. Carter does. I need to, I need to figure out a way to own some houses. But, you know, little kid me, I didn't see any path to owning any of these properties. You know, anybody who knows anything about real estate in Northeast, it's always been expensive. It's not like since COVID, the market has always been really expensive. So I never thought I could actually own any properties. And that was kind of a limiting belief that I had into my 20s, just like I can't afford real estate. Even after I became a software engineer, I had a you know well-paying job. I just, in my mind, I could not afford it. Um, until a buddy of mine takes me to a, a local real estate meetup and I learned all about wholesale and real estate. And I just had this really light bulb moment. You know, sometimes you hear something and it kind of like gives you chills, like, oh man, it gets you, gets you excited. That was the feeling I had uh, when I started wholesaling. Um, and I, you know, I, I dove right into it. We had some success there. But then one week, my wife and I go on vacation. Uh, I think we were gone for maybe two weeks and the, the checks stopped coming. <laughs> there were no deals being made. Um, you know, it's not like we were doing deals at a rapid fire pace, but I just, in the back of my mind, I was like, man, I'm not making any money right now. There's yeah. no money coming in. And it's because wholesaling, there's no passive aspect to it. So I, st I started to turn my sights towards um, multifamily, actually buying, you know, properties like I originally intended and um, still ran into some of those same issues. I mean, the prices had, hadn't gone down over 20 years, right? So um, I started looking at partnering with people you know, on duplexes and things like that. And the numbers just weren't penciling after you pay back the bank and you pay back your partner, there's like $7 of cash flow left for you a month, right? <laughs> so um, I started analyzing bigger and bigger deals, just trying to find the sweet spot uh, where I could take advantage of that economy of scale and, you know, still make some cash flow for myself at the end of the day. End of the day. And that kind of brought me into the world of capital raising, which kind of just catapulted me into um, so many different angles of real estate. I've learned so many different things over the years. Very nice. Let me ask you, it's just kind of a, a thought off the cuff, but do you, so like with your journey and what you've learned, do you find it um, easier to do by yourself or do you like the whole idea of like joining the mastermind, joining the group, like-minded people, all that? Like what's your, what's your take on that? What do you tell somebody new kind of thinking about that? Join the mastermind. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a DIY guy. I mean, to the core. My house renovation, ton of ton of DIY stuff. I never renovated a house before. I just watched YouTube and did it. Yeah. My wife's hair extensions, yeah. I did those because I'm just like, I'll do it, bro. <laughs> Forget paying somebody, I'll do it. Right. Um, but dude, when you actually put yourself in a position to learn from highly experienced people, the way it catapults you forward. There's almost no price you can put on it. If it's something that you're really, really dedicated to doing, you know, if it's just a hobby, laissez-faire, maybe don't pay the money because the good ones aren't cheap, right? Yeah. But if you're serious, join the mastermind. Take it from someone who has DIY'd ridiculous things that you should definitely pay somebody to do. <laughs> join it with the mastermind. I love it, man. Good stuff. So is there any particular asset classes and or markets that you focus on? And if so, why? Yeah. Um, so I'm actually real excited to talk about that. I'm, I'm all in on mobile home parks. Nice. I'm all in on mobile home parks um, for a few reasons. Uh, the biggest one being it's still kind of a blue ocean. I mean, you go to any real estate conference and you ask 100 people what asset class they invest in. I bet you only five to 10 of them will say mobile home parks and the rest are going to say multifamily. Yeah. Right. So that's number one. Number two, at the time of this recording, we're at 2023, January multifamily, um, apartments have little to no yield right now. And they haven't for the last year and a half to almost two years. Um, 
that's number two. So, you know, actual cash flow, you can still get, get that out of, uh, out of mobile home parks. And, um, it's an interesting asset class to me because while it doesn't offer the same type of appreciation that say, um, an apartment building would, it's also very recession resistant in, in that one, it's the most affordable housing available in the country, yep. right? There's no cheaper level of home ownership than a mobile, a mobile home. And we're not talking about like M and M eight mile Salem's lot mobile homes. These are like <laughs> nice manufactured homes, beautiful communities that we're able to create. Um, but also too, they're not making any more of them. It is very, very difficult to get the permits required to create a new mobile home park, which means that it, it's kind of like land, you know, you can't, they're not making any more land. So land is a great asset to invest in. Um, so those are some of the reasons why I really, really love that asset class. And also again, being able to provide, um, affordable, nice, clean, safe housing, um, for the people who really need it. Obviously there's a huge need for affordable housing in this country. It's an actual problem. Like next to global warming, we have a housing issue, right? Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, my, my way of trying to contribute to that solution. Are there any uh, specific markets that you really, you really like or parts of the country? So don't tell anyone this. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting, interesting things happening in the Southeast. Obviously that's a really, the Sun Belt's a hot market, but Kentucky and Tennessee have some very interesting things happening right now, as far as job growth and um, industry that offer some opportunities to anybody looking. Um, so those are a couple of markets that, that I'm looking at. Um, also weird markets like upstate New York. Um, there's a little bit of odd opportunity there in some of those, some of those communities as well. Very interesting. Cool, man. So let me ask you like what simple market strategies and tactics uh, kind of initially allowed you to get traction with getting new investors into your business? I know that's, that's interesting because it's so different for everybody, but curious to see what's worked for you. Yeah, this is, this is an interesting one too, because, um, like you said, it's, it's going to be different from every, for everybody. And the reason is, I think the best way to do that is by sticking to what you're good at, you know? So, uh, we've met several times, you know, I'm a really outgoing person. I love talking to people. I like networking. So in-person events have been almost all of my investors have been people I've met at some meetup or conference or something like that, uh, because I, I really like forming those long-term relationships with people and, um, going to events is a great way to do that. I know everyone's going to be like, ah, oh, that's not scalable because <laughs> you know, I have a limited amount of time, which is totally true. I totally know it's not scalable, but I think sometimes we get lost in that, right? Like only doing scalable things because our time is worth so much. Well, if you're not making any money, your time is actually worth zero. Right. So low leverage activities are totally OK to do um, when you're first getting started. And actually what that spiraled into is uh, speaking engagements for me, yep. which are a little bit more scalable now. Right. Because these things are recorded. They kind of live in perpetuity. Um, so those are kind of the top of funnel things for me. Nice. I like it. I was going to say, yeah, we've uh, we've met and hung out several times, which is always really fun. And uh, I'll just warn people watching and listening, if you have a drink with Hollis, he may not pay for it. <laughs> what? He'll get you back. He'll get you back at the next stop. No. Right. I forgot. That. <laughs> oh, man, it all worked out good. So let me ask you this. Uh, what's been the biggest mistake you've made in marketing so far? Kind of if you're looking at yourself going, what was I thinking? What does that look like? Oh man, um, where do I start? Um, I would say trying to do cold calling myself. Yeah. Um, and the reason being is that I hate it. Yeah. I actually, and it's not that I like don't have the tough skin for it, but man, I kind of I'm not a huge fan of talking to people on the phone anyway. Yeah. Full disclosure. Yep. Um, so talking to strangers on the phone who just may or may not be interested. Who knows? I don't know when I'm catching them, all, all these types of things. Yeah. Um, actual legit cold calling went terribly for me. The, the, 
day I started doing more deals was when I hired somebody else to do it. Yep. Um, that's when I started to get more leads. And I think, again, I really believe in the idea of, of, of um, unique abilities. So whatever we're good at, whatever we actually enjoy doing, those are the things we're going to have the most success at. And that's kind of proven true for me. Like I hated cold calling. I don't know, you know, but the DIY in me forced me to do it myself first. <laughs> I also hate cold calling. And it's like, I always think like I wouldn't be receptive to this crap. So I don't know why anybody else would be. That's what I think about. So people knock on my door or try to cold call. Like if I respond at all, so it's not going to be, I'm not going to be like over the top rude, but I'm going to be like, bro, stop talking. Does it happen? You know? So wrap it up. Yeah, it's like, give me one word and then get out of here. So, no, I totally get that, man. Uh, I'd love for you to share a story with me about this journey uh, so far that you haven't shared publicly, haven't shared on another podcast. It could be anything you want. It could be humor. It can be anything you want. Just a total uh, clean slate for you there. Um, I will. Okay, I'll share this. I'll share this. Um, anybody who knows me, I, I've... Getting into the world of commercial real estate and raising capital at a large scale, um, at the time of this recording, I'm, I'm fairly new to that world. And again, joining a mastermind has definitely catapulted me forward. Um, but something I haven't really talked about is how badly my first capital raise went. <laughs> it went spectacularly poor. I mean, you know, for someone who's been around real estate, you have all these contacts in real estate. I've got investors. I've, I've done deals with. I've got realtors. I've got all these people at meetups. I don't know. I got maybe two or three hundred names on a list that I'm feeling hyped up. I'm like, I can at least bring five hundred thousand dollars to the table. Easy. All these people. Come on. That was not true. <laughs> um, lots of phone calls and emails later. I'm sitting here with a measly fifty k. Um, and fortunately I had some really high performers on my team, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. So yeah. I was able to hide behind some folks, but, uh, that, that is the first time I've ever said that out loud. So. Yeah. Good, <laughs> but it was really cool. I, I think it's really good because I'm sure there's going to be people watching and listening. They're like, man, I, I didn't even do that. Or I've been there as well. So it just makes it so relatable, man. You know, that's, and the thing is about the show, uh, you can tell you, they have no idea what I'm going to ask. You know, that's kind of the point. And, uh, you know, just to, to catch people authentically and get the story is, is what we're doing here. So I love it, man. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll, I'll tack something on there. Sure. A huge, huge thing for me, even though I failed, right, I didn't do what I, the amount that I said I was going to do. My goal was to do it. And to be honest, even wiring over my little, chump change compared to what everybody else did if you want to look at it that way yeah. um i felt so good about it like legitimately excited like oh man you know i did it um and so i think to me that was kind of the takeaway was setting the goal and intention to do something not necessarily measuring based on like our, an outcome but the journey um was a huge takeaway for me yeah it's important because now you can say i've done it right? It doesn't matter how it went, you did it. And then the more you do anything, the more you go, oh, this is what I need to tweak here, tweak here, then eventually you get to the place you always wanted to be. But the good thing is everybody starts in the same place. So it's a, it's a nice thing to reflect on once in a while. Um, all right, let's pretend somebody is like, hey, Hollis, you know, I'm getting started in this game. Uh, what do you recommend I do from a marketing standpoint? What's the one piece of advice you give a rookie that wants to do this? So something I'm all in on right now is the content, um, social media. I will preface this by saying I am not a social media guy. Like I was not one of these people that had came in with, you know, 5,000, 10,000 followers on Instagram, Twitter. I didn't, I had, I sent my first tweet this month. <laughs> so, um, but looking at the direction that everything is going and uh, I heard something on, on social media from a creator that really resonated with me that these days, whoever has the content has the credibility. Yeah. And that's may not be true to some degree, but to a large degree, it is right. The, the people who we see in front of us the most are the people who we tend to listen to. Now, 
I'm not telling you to make things up or fake it till you make it or whatever you want to call it, but just being really genuine and open about your experience and sharing that and creating content about that on social media, like do it publicly, whatever you're building, build it publicly. Yeah. Um, I think that's really going to be the best the best thing you can do because once you have that audience, whether you want to raise capital for a duplex, a crypto fund, a, a ATM fund, or like to go fund your mom's heart surgery, if you have an audience, you'll be able to do that. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. What's ironic is, uh, I didn't even tell you this, I woke up this morning, looked at my phone to figure out, you know, what time it is, what day of the week it is, that type of thing. And the first thing I saw on social media was you. I was like, hey, I know that guy. That guy didn't pay for his drinks. And uh, <laughs> it's working. It, it was a real on, I don't know if it was Facebook or LinkedIn, it would have been one of those two. Um, I guess it could have been Instagram. I don't even know. But you were you were talking and there was like, or maybe it was still, but I saw you and there was some green text across the picture. And I can't remember to say, but I was like, that's weird. I'm talking to him today. How, how does how does it now? So yeah, so you're in my mind as soon as I woke up, which is cool. Uh, awesome, man. So tell me, what are you most focused on with your business? Let's say the rest of 2023, what do you get your eyes on? Yeah. So, um, again, content creation is a huge thing for me. And, and, um, in Q1, uh, I'm actually just kind of building out a whole system that may at some point turn into a course to help folks be able to create content at volume. Because I think personally for me, that was the bottleneck. It's not that I didn't want to do it, but you know, I'm, 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 I got two, what do they say? I got two left thumbs when it comes to using these apps on the phone and everything like that. So um, I'm actually building out a system for that. Uh, Q1, that's a huge focus. And actually acquiring uh, two to three uh, mobile home parks uh, in this year are kind of some of the, the, the high level goals that I have and finding ways to uh, give back to the community. This community has really helped me out in so many ways. Um, so I'm doing that through public speaking um, and just trying to create a couple of other opportunities for some folks um, where I can. I love it, man. I'm a big fan of yours and everything that you're doing. So let me ask you something about the content. As an entrepreneur myself, I've got this question many times over the year. Are you like a written content guy or a video content guy? Both. Both. Um, and that I do only believe in doing things that are scalable. When it comes to creating content, I want to be able to create a written piece of content that I can turn into a video that I can turn into a LinkedIn post that I can turn into several tweets. So that's kind of my method is I spend about, well, I try to get on as many podcasts as possible one, because this is all beautiful, like repurpose, re oh, yeah. repurposable content uh, that's super conversational. Um, so usually what I'll do is I'll take a podcast episode or I'll sit and talk to the camera, which I hate doing. I'll sit and talk to the camera for 30 or 45 minutes about a topic. And I'll take that transcript and I'll drop it into nowadays chat GPT before I was doing it by hand, but nowadays I'll drop it to chat GPT and it'll help me basically give me an outline for a bunch of written, uh, written content, long and short form, but based on that. Gotcha. Very nice. Yeah. I'm a big video guy just because I'm usually a one take guy, whether it's content or I'll do Facebook lives or things like this, but video is in my opinion, it's the quickest way to build trust with people. People look at you and go to this he or she believe what they're saying. So there's a lot that happens even subconsciously and it's super shareable and super consumable. Just like TV worked on us when we were growing up, right? You get drawn into TV much more so than, you know, comic books or radio back then. So, um, but now the radio too, that's why, that's why we're doing both here. That, that, that's a really good point though, because you think about, I, I can't name who writes like my favorite to Wall Street Journal articles, mm -hmm. right? But like news reporter, everybody knows who Anderson Cooper is. Like love him or hate him, yep. right? So that 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 that's a really good point, and that's something I want to maybe uh, a key takeaway for everybody. And it's something that I've been doing that's been super helpful. Is even if you don't have a podcast, have a video or in person conversation with someone and record it. Yep. Just give it thirty minutes, forty five minutes, an hour, whatever you want to do. You'll be surprised how many clips of content, of video content, you can create just from doing that once a week oh yeah you can make a ton very cool man so uh if anybody watching or listening wants to learn more about what you're doing or what you're into how can they do so i'm taking it back to the content man follow me on any social media platform at rei hollis there you go beautiful 
Well, this has been fun, man. Uh, I hope it was enjoyable for you as well. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Look forward to you buying me another drink. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the show. I had a great time making it, and I hope you really enjoyed yourself listening to it. If you want to keep up with all things Real Estate Investor Marketing Stories podcast related, I encourage you strongly to go to reimarketingstories.com and signing up for our podcast newsletter. We will simply keep you up to date with what's going on with the show, new episodes, and things like that. reimarketingstories.com. So hopefully today's episode and the other episodes that you'll listen to will remind you that as a real estate investor, everybody starts at the beginning, okay? Um, Our guest today and the other guests that you will hear on this show will share their real story, right? They'll tell you what worked, what didn't work. And I want you to remember one thing if you remember nothing else today. It's possible for you to, okay? Never stop going and keep following your passion. Finally, today's show has been brought to you by CapitalRaisingAutomations.com. If you're an active capital raiser and you are ready to learn the three areas that are holding you back from raising more capital, I strongly suggest you check out CapitalRaisingAutomations.com. Check out our free 10-minute video there, and you let me know if it doesn't provide you value. I'm sure it will. All right, thanks again for listening to the show this week. Hope to see you next time. Take care.